Okay, first view is going to be against Adesanya, and the second view is going to be against Strickland. Okay, both of them are going to be versions, different versions of his, uh, as the title suggests, goofy blitzes that he likes to do, or just the fury of strikes. So to start here, he just kind of double jabs and gets Adesanya moving away from him, which is pretty typical for what he likes to do in these situations. And we're going to pause here and we're going to spend a fair amount of time here because this is something I want you to conceptualize. This movement right here is going to play a role in a lot of the breakdown. So globally, I want you to just notice that you've got, you can't see it, but you've got a bend in the ankle, ankle dorsiflexion, which is bringing the toes up, which is otherwise known as ankle flexion. Plantar flexion is pointing the toes down like you would pushing a gas pedal. That's extension, ankle extension. They both have flexion in the name, so it's kind of confusing. But you've got ankle dorsiflexion that you can't see, knee flexion and hip flexion, along with lateral trunk flexion. So he's bringing the shoulder down to his hip. On the other side, while this is happening, you have ankle plantar flexion or ankle extension. You have knee extension, and you also have hip extension. You also have an elongation or an extension of the trunk, right? So not spinal extension, although his spine is extended a little. He's got the elongation, so this is a global extension of the body and global flexion of the body. Uh, this, is a, this is a synergy pattern that we see even from infancy. Okay, so we just pull up this baby, he's reaching for, just look at kind of the similarity there, it would be almost as if Duplessis is laying on the stomach and reaching for something with his left hand. So on the side that it's reaching, you've got relative trunk elongation on the other side, Hip, baby's hips don't extend very much, but this hip is more extended as compared to the hip on the side that's not. The lateral flexion on that side is crunching down coupled with hip flexion, knee flexion. So you can see kind of the, the global extension on one side of the body and then the flexion on the other side of the body. That just goes to show you that we see this movement pattern in a lot of different things, okay? So as he's pushing off and rotating, we talk a lot about the hip and shoulder Dissociation, he actually doesn't dissociate the shoulder here very much from the hips, okay? And when he does that, he's elevating or protracting the shoulder to deliver, or protracting the scapula to deliver the rest of the upper extremity. So this is, the overhand is sort of a combination of glenohumeral abduction and horizontal adduction. So muscles like the middle delt are abducting the shoulder and then whenever the angle changes, you've got the anterior delt and the pec major that, that work to bring it into horizontal adduction and finish uh, the overhand. And so he finishes this one. The big thing I want you to notice with this, when he hits the next punch, there's two. So one, watch his hips. They don't really switch very much. So he uses a lot of thoracic, he just uses a lot of thoracic rotation and glenohumeral horizontal adduction to finish this. The second thing I want you to notice is that his, in, his, his glenohumeral joint is internally rotated to the point where he, needs, he wants his palm down, so his forearm is pronated, but most of that movement is still happening at the glenohumeral joint so that the top of his hand or his fist hits Adesanya in the face. Now, he does something pretty interesting on the next throw. So he doesn't switch his hips, he actually gets all of the switch movement to take advantage of that stretch reflex. He does it with his upper body. So it, it may be due to the physical constraints, so he can't, he can't really turn because his, his hips are kind of pressed up against Adesanya, and he's got very little room on the other side because of the cage. But whenever he hits here and he walks forward, he uses his lateral trunk flexion to the right and rotation to the right to get more leverage so that he can whip and take advantage of that stretch reflex in muscles like the anterior delt and the pec major. And we've talked about that a little bit more in some of the other videos. I'll link it below if you want to learn more about that. So not a ton of hip switch, but he uses his upper thoracic spine or his really his global spine to bend to the right and rotate to the right and then rapidly rotate to the left during the punch. Now, here, he does use it, so there's a little bit more separation between him and Adesanya. He's got more room, so when he steps forward, boom, the sh draw a line between the shoulders. It's facing that shoulder, that line would come straight towards us, and if we drew a line between the hips, the, the, it would be kind of like along this plane. So he does switch his hips here to, in order to, when he reaches around again, we've got that trunk elongation with the ankle 
hip and knee extension as well. Uh, and he also, he also does the internal rotation at the shoulder to make contact with the back of the fist. And then he takes them down. So let's watch it a little bit quicker through. Jab, jab, flexion one side, extension the other side. Not a lot of hip switch, but a lot of or minimal amounts of thoracic rotation. Almost no hip switch, but he uses his upper body for an upper body strike, which is weird, instead of uh, the lower body. And then switches his hips, it looks a little bit more normal here when he makes contact. And then we're gonna watch it through. This is in slow-mo, so it's not full speed, but you still get a really good appreciation of how he moves, even though it's not consistent and it's pretty goofy. <laughs> I'm starting to run into a problem where I have more questions than I can answer pertaining to injury advice, biomechanics, anatomy, etc. Which is a good problem to have. Up until this point I've answered almost all of your messages. However, I'm still doing this part time and seeing patients. So I'm running out of time during the day. So unfortunately I'm going to have to stop answering questions on my Instagram DMs and my email. So if you have questions for me, I've created a Patreon account. There's only one tier which is set at $5 a month. So if you just want to generally support or you want to be a part of the only place that I'll be answering questions, consider checking out my Patreon. Now back to the breakdown. All right, so this next one is, is a lot quicker, and, and Sean Strickland does a really good job. You could tell he was, he'd been watching Duplessis and, and, and having people like just kind of throw random punches because he does a really good job defending this. But one thing I want you to notice in the beginning, and this is, this is kind of how inconsistent he is and how much he relies on timing. This, I mean, this just accentuates that point that people try to make. So we talked about the flexion and elong, tr trunk flexion and elongation synergy. Right here, He's throwing the punch with the same leg that he's stepping forward with. And he's also diving his head down. So this may be a, a strategic on his part for something like his Sean stance or something that he noticed in the way that Strickland moves. But we typically, like we saw in the last one, let's go back. We can see that the, the hand that's throwing the punch is coupled with the leg that's relatively extended in that triple extended position. He throws his first punch <laughs> with, his, with his left hand <laughs> oh, after his head was kind of like dived down towards the ground and the rear leg is the right leg. So he's flexing, laterally flexing to the right on the side that's extended. So he does the exact opposite of what he did in the last, <laughs> in the last view. So it probably even feels a little bit weird to him, uh, but he kind of recorrects. And when Sean blocks this, now he's stepping forward with the left and He's actually able to get a little bit of a hip extension, knee extension, ankle extension, trunk elongation, that really good shoulder elevation or protraction there. Uh, but again, Sean does a really good job of defending that. But I just wanted you to show that <laughs> even though we see this synergy a lot in real life and even in something like the Superman punch, even though it would be airborne, uh, he <laughs> he's so his style is so weird that even the way that he does his own blitz is not consistent. Uh, if you pay attention to kind of those, those synergy patterns and you try to relate them to something that he does, he's really just kind of unpredictable. So, and which is part of what makes him hard to beat. So let's just watch it all the way through. This is still in a little bit of, yeah, really hard to notice there, but when, again, once you break it down, it's a little easier to see. <laughs> 